and welcome to the December 2018 quarterly video series for Forager Funds Management. I'm Chief Investment Officer Steve Johnson and I'm joined in this first video by International Fund Analyst Chloe Stokes. Hi Chloe. Hi Steve. We added seven new stocks to the International Fund portfolio last year and one of them was uh, one of Chloe's ideas, a little Kiwi company called Hallenstein Glasson Holdings. Chloe, maybe start with how you first came across this business. So Hallenstein's operates under two retail brands, Hallenstein Brothers and Glassons. I started shopping at Glassons about a year ago. When I was in store, I was noticing that they were restocking at least weekly. And often when I was in there, the staff would need to go up to the stock room to get my size for me because they'd been selling out so quickly. They also have a really prominent social media presence. I noticed their Instagram followers growing and I also noticed them showing up on other unrelated Instagram accounts. Once I found out they were listed, I was keen to take a closer look. Now, this is no surprise, but I'd never heard of Glassons in my life. But I, I did mention the, the store to my 18-year-old niece, and her and all of her friends are quite fanatical about it. Can you just maybe describe, I, I guess, exactly what they sell and, and who they're trying to target? So they're targeting females, um, mostly millennials, but they do have a basics range that targets to their older consumers. They are kind of classified as fast fashion in that they're trying to keep up with current trends and they're quite good at keeping up with trends quickly. However, I think the quality of their stuff is a bit better than what you would typically relate to fast fashion. And is this new or has it been around for a long time or what's the, the history, I guess, of that, that business? So it's been around for a long time, but they have changed a lot recently. They've got a new buying team and they've been reformatting their stores. And as I said, they're really prominent on social media and that's a much more recent thing. Okay, and you said Glassons is a female fashion brand. What about the Hallenstein side of the business? So Hallenstein Brothers is a male store. It's similar to Glassons in that it targets millennials largely, but the range of stock is even wider. So a male can go into Hallenstein Brothers and purchase anything from sweatpants to board shorts and even a $200 suit. 200 bucks, I could have <laughs> saved a lot on this one in a Hallenstein store. Uh, so that's fantastic. You know, we've got a business here that we think is popular at the moment, people are shopping at. What did the numbers tell you when you, you started to dig? So it's been a profitable business for a long period of time. Earnings have been volatile, but it's clearly resilient. When I took a closer look, I noticed that it was paying a big dividend yield. I think it's around 11% at current prices, and it's still trading at less than 10 times earnings. When I was going back through the annual reports, it was clear that they had a very conservative management team. So those things were all big ticks for me. Okay, so they've got quite a, a big or a bigger business in New Zealand than they have in Australia that has been around and profitable for a long time. We think we can make the valuation sort of stack up based on current profitability, but we do want this business to grow. Where do you think the growth is going to come from? I definitely think the growth is going to come from Australia. So Glassons currently has 32 stores in Australia, less than they have in New Zealand. And as you know, Australia is a much bigger market. I think the number of stores could comfortably double. And if that were to happen, we'd do very well out of this investment. So with 30 something stores at the moment, if that doubles, it goes to 60. We've got lots of retail concepts in Australia that are 200 and 300 stores. Uh, why the limited ambitions there in terms of how many stores this business can have? So as I mentioned, management are very conservative and they're very considered in their store selection, which can be a very good thing. I think they're also very aware that the retail market is changing. They don't want to open a number of stores in low foot traffic locations, have a giant store base and then realise that the correct strategy was to have less stores and just grow their online presence. So I think that's what they'll be focusing on now. Okay, and how's the online part of the business been going there? And, and do you think that's what most people do now, that they walk into a store and then they end up buying lots online? Or is it a different type of consumer who's buying online from in-store? So online is around 13% of sales, and I definitely think there's room for that to grow. I think bricks and mortar retail is changing. I was actually listening to a Goldman Sachs po podcast last year, and they were talking about retailers even either moving towards the showroom model or the distribution center model. I think Glassons is definitely more towards the showroom model. So they have smaller stores in high foot traffic locations and these stores are more like marketing for the brand. Once the consumer gets comfortable, then they can easily order stock online. That's made even easier with things like free returns, which Glassons has just implemented recently. Great. 
So this is an interesting uh, little retailer. It's the, the word retailer brings with it a lot of risks, particularly in the current environment. It's only a small business and it's fairly illiquid. So we've limited our position sizing here to about two and a half percent, but it's a business that we're quite enthusiastic about the prospects of and are looking forward to following over the next few years. Thanks for watching.